Let's take a look at a simple screen config here. So we have a center screen that's 5 high by 13 wide and it says each panel is 80 pixels high and 80 pixels wide. Then we have stage right screen with a config of 5 high by 10 wide. Again it's 80 pixels wide, 80 pixels high. And we have stage left screen which is also 5 by 10. Each panel is 80 high by 80 wide. So let's go ahead and launch our pixel perfect LED. If you are running a trial version it will give you a evaluation exploration uh, window here. Mine says zero days left which means I'm on my last day. Usually it comes with a two day evaluation period so if you need to buy it you can go ahead and order it from the order website or you can if you have your registration code you can go ahead and uh, type it in. I'm just gonna go ahead and click continue for now and continue evaluating this software. So there's two major parts of it. You have a pixel perfect LED window and you also have your presets window. Now every time you launch your software it starts with the one layer already built in and that's already set to 80 panels high by 80 panels wide and uh, right now it's one column and one row. So let's start with the stage right screen which was 5 high by 10 wide. Again we're going to type in our panels pixels right here if you need to change it from 80 to 80 and column is 10 columns wide and we are five rows tall. Now that's our full screen right there pixel to pixel. If you need to do offsets on a horizontal or vertical we're gonna just do it just to see what it does. So I'm gonna move it 100 pixels in on an x-axis horizontally and you can see it move right here. Vertical now same thing we're gonna just move it down 500 pixels. Uh, if you look at it, our raster width is 1920 by 1080. If you do need to change your raster size for whatever reason, you can type it in right there and go ahead and click update to see updated window on that. For our testing purposes, we're going to keep it at 1920 1080. So now that we have our screen done here, now let's look at this background right here. So we have two colors that does the checkerboard pattern for us so we can identify easily if any of the mapping is wrong or if any of the projection is wrong. Either way, if you take out the background, it takes away the background and it's, you're left with just the borders, which is your outline, also as well as your circle with crosshatch on it. And if you uncheck all of those, of course your screen goes away. It's still there, you just don't see it. So let's enable the background now. And let's pick two different colors. So we can go ahead and pick a blue one and then a second color I like to keep it pretty much the same color just a lighter shade or a different shade aesthetically it just looks better but again you can pick whatever color you like go ahead and close that up now let's select outline now my outline is set to one pixel on each each cabinet or each panel so there's two pixels of white on each center lines right here and on the side it should be just one pixel because you have one pixel border around this square one pixel border around this square that's how you get two pixels in between now looking at the circle here if you need to have a circle with the crosshatch of course it's best to have it so you can see aspect ratio if it gets stretched or anything if it's being scaled anywhere it's easily identifiable you can also change the color for that right here. I'm going to just keep it for pink. It's also set to 4 pixels. You can of course make it thicker with 10 pixels or you can make it thinner with 1 pixel. I like being 4 as a best default option. Then this right here is your XY label uh, which goes right up here on the top corner. So if I enable that you can see it x and y axis so if you change this for any reason from 100 to 0 now your x axis just became 0 uh, your y is of course still at 500 if you change that that can definitely that will definitely change with it 
Again, you can change the colors for that if you really want to. I'm going to keep it at white. Uh, you also have a screen size label, which is the size of the entire pixel to pixel of the screen that we just created. So I'm going to check that box and type in the size of the font that you want in here. So as you can see, that's width is 800, height is 400. And if you multiply 80 by 10, you would get 800. If you multiply 80 by 5, you would get 400 here. So that's how those numbers are up there. You don't have to calculate that. It does that for you. Now you also have a layer 0, which is just the name of the screen, uh, which is what we have here under layer name. Now we can go ahead and change that to stage right, as that's our stage right screen just so it's easily identifiable. The name sh also shows up on your layer right here on the top. So you can easily select which layer you're working with as well. Uh, this currently right now draw panel label and this whole section is disabled for now. We are working on that update to bring it to you guys as soon as possible. It should be working in the near future. Uh, so now that's one way of making the screen, which you already had. Uh, now if you need to add another screen, there's two ways to do it. You can all click on this plus icon and select a screen. It will again start a red dot, um, one panel, 80 by 80, one by one. So let's create a center screen now. So that center screen was 13 by 5. And as you can see, the both colors are red right now, so you're not going to see the checkerboard pattern until you select the colors. So I'm just going to go ahead and select a couple of different colors here. Um, again, your offset vertical horizontal if you need to do it. If not, you can leave it at 0, 0. Um, your XY label and also your screen label, which are very important to me. So we're going to select center screen and now that's there. If you need to change any colors, you can definitely change any of these color fields right here. And I'm going to change my outline to blue or green maybe. Green should be, be uh, better seen on the screen. It will pop at you so you can actually see the two pixels of green. Um, all right, so that looks good to me. Now, another way to add a screen, we're going to add a stage left screen. So right here, this one, it's 80 by 80, or you can select any of the other ones, but these are presets, so you, the whole point is to not to modify it too much. So if you like this one, since it's 80 by 80 already, just drag it in. And it is right now set to 5 by 3, and as you notice, you can't see that screen on here. It's there, it's just underneath the center screen on the layer, so it's hidden underneath it. So if I click this visible off, you can see that screen sitting right there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that visibility back on so I can see it. So in order for me to move that screen in this available space, what I'm going to do is just do offset first. So I'm going to start horizontal since this one, I'm going to put it right next to this stage right screen. So horizontal I'm going to do 800. And vertical I'm going to do 500, same as the stage right. So now there you go. It's starting off right next to it. And this was supposed to be 10 by 5. And voila, we have our screen. If you need to change the colors, again the same thing. Just select the color wells right here and Select the two different colors you like and go ahead and close that out. Again, same thing. I want to see my XY offset. I want to definitely see my screen size. And I'm going to label this to be stage left. So there you go. There's a whole pixel map of it. Now, if you want to get fancy with it, you can, of course, add any of the images you like. So if you do add image file, I'm going to go ahead and select one of the images I have stored here somewhere. 
Now this image I've just made for the background purposes. As you can see, this is sitting on a second layer. So we can see our first screen, but we don't see anything else underneath it. So you just want to pull that down and you still can't see it, just go ahead and click update. And that will update your layers there and put them in the right order. Again, this image is set to 1920 1080. If you need to change that size for whatever reason, again, you just type in the numbers here. I'm just going to do 1500 just so you can see it. And I'm going to do 1000 here. Just so again, you can see the image resizing on the background here. I'm going to go ahead and add a logo file. Go ahead and select the image file. I have one sitting on my desktop. Again, this is just my logo. Now that's sitting up here on the top corner, as you can see. I'm going to keep the logo size the same, but I want to do the offset on it. And since we've done 1500 on the other one, I want to try to get it in the bottom corner or the top corner, doesn't really matter wherever you have space. Uh, and you can play with these numbers until you can, like you can guess and try to get it or if you get lucky where you like it there, you can leave it right there. I'm going to resize this one back to 1920 And now I have my logo added to the background there. So if you want to save a PNG file ready to go in your media server such as Resolume or VDMX5 or whatever that may be, you can just go ahead and click Save PNG. Go ahead and name it. So I'm going to name this Example 2. Save. You can also go ahead and save PSD file, which is your Photoshop file. Again, the Photoshop, whatever is visible here on the side, it keeps all of those layers exactly as is, pixel to pixel, for you to work in Photoshop. If you want to add anything, if you want to add a masking on top of it for any reason, if you want to create a mask for your uh, Resolume template or whatever else, it's super easy to use this. So you Go ahead and save this as example 2 as well since that's a Photoshop file, it's a different file extension. You can also save the project so you can come back and work on it later on if for any reason if any of your products change, if you want to change your offsets, if you want to change your screen sizes. The best way to do it is go ahead and type in example 2 here, save the project. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and quit the application here and restart the application so you guys can see exactly how that works. So now I'm going to go ahead and restart my application. Again on my evaluation I'm going to click continue. Click open project and I'm looking for my example2.rdl. Now this is a proprietary file only works in this program. You cannot use this file anywhere else. That populated our entire layout exactly as we had it. So for whatever reason, let's say your center screen changed from 80 pixel to 80 pixel to a different product, which is a little bit more high res and it's 100 pixel by 100 pixels now. And there you go. That's all you had to do. Again, you can go ahead and save PNG as example 3. And you have your pixel map all ready to go here as example 3 sitting on my desktop. And there you go.